the role, oh yeah, Kimura, uh, you know, he's kind of like a, kind of not the last boss, but like a, the middle boss, you know, he's a, a brilliant dark web hacker, I guess, and he's a modern day Yakuza guy, so, you know, he can get whatever he wants. At the core, he's a teddy bear, you know, which is kind of fun. So that's what's really fun about this character, where he could play this gruff villain, but you get to see a different side of him, you know, that the, the worst thing that he's ever done in, in his life was peeing in the pool, right? <laughs> casting director Christian Kaplan, actually he was in casting a different anime movie, and he brought me in, and as I was reading for that, I said, you know what? We're just germinating, you know, in the idea phases for this other movie. Would you mind just doing a test voice for this? It's like, okay, sure. And then it all kind of came all together. I love the fact that he has that duality of this tough exterior, but this literally this gushy <laughs> interior probably. So Last week I was uh, in Santa Barbara. I saw this guy talking to a pigeon. And I'm like, oh, interesting. And then he told the pigeon, it's like, I know you're with the FBI. I know you're spying on me. I was like, oh my God, wow. The Disney marketing must have gone viral or something like that. They're, they're really out of them. Yeah. Or I've been thinking about the movie a little bit too much and I'm starting to hallucinate everything. In fact, you guys all start to look like pigeons to me. Yeah? It's like, it's like... So what's it like for you to be, have that background as a digital artist and then be in an animated film that requires that skill? Yeah, it's, it's, it's so fascinating. Uh, first of all, I worked at ILM and worked on the Star Wars 1, 2, and 3. So you, got, you could find... You can find my name in the credits. It is definitely different, but it's also, I love it because it's, you know, it's, they're both very collaborative, uh, you know, and it's very creative. It's, uh, I love the idea of using computers to solve creative problems. I think that's a, a fantastic thing. And for me, I ha what it allows me to do is, it, has, it allows me to understand the process and have a lot of respect for the animators. Like, I know what it takes to render that one scene, and, you know, if we all of a sudden on a whim and say, you know, I don't want to match that. I want to say a different line and change this or I want to go over and I want to improvise 16 seconds and not 14 seconds. I know what those extra two seconds mean to the animators. So what it allows me to do is be more technical uh, in terms of my, my acting, whether it's on live action or voice, uh, because of my understanding of what goes on behind the scenes. And I also have a respect for the process. I, have a, I could have a shorthand where they know it's like, Monsi, don't stand there because I know we're having a green scene. We're going to comp it later on. Uh, so if you move, yeah, I, no problem. Because I know if I do this, that's another $50,000 worth of uh, effect shot that they have to do, right? But some actors will not think about that. So it gives me the appreciation and the ability to communicate, understand the process uh, so I can adjust, technically adjust my acting to uh, uh, you know, make it, uh, the process easier and better for the animators. But what I can do as an actor is I want to make sure we're you know, culturally authentic, right? So uh, I want, you know, especially in day, this day and age, we want to make sure we're, we're uh, appropriately, you know, and because nobody wants to like portray culturals, you know, uh, misrepresent them uh, intentionally, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, so certain things like earlier rendering, I thought, ah, I wouldn't. There's yakuzas with tattoos are a stereotype, but they wouldn't wear this much tattoo or things like that. So those are things I would I would comment on. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, you know, I feel like, you know, that's that's a creative choice that everyone makes. Mm -hmm. So you know, I want to respect that and be collaborative and just add on to what they've created so the spy stuff is fun and you know it's escapism right that's why we do film why we love watching films is the things that you would never do you know and unfortunately i had a chance to do that you know some of my original you know my, my hero stuff where i could do a lot of the stunts and stuff but it's all so i always enjoy these kind of spy films you know it's uh, you know, it's uh, fun for the fun for the whole family you know, hopefully kids will want to be spies one day Maybe not. Or pigeons. Yeah, one of them. <laughs> yeah. Would you have any aspirations to direct an animation film of your own? I would love that. You know, I'm Japanese. I was immersed in Japanese culture, so manga and anime is my life, you know. To be able to work on an anime film, uh, and probably more anime than CG, you know, because, look, uh, Pixar and, and Disney and, you know, Blue Sky, Dreamers, I mean, they have amazing... Air, and I know how much work and, you know, time goes into that. But what I can bring in uniquely is probably kind of the concept of the Hollywood storytelling uh, mixed in with the Japanese background. So I would love to work with Japanese anime and kind of like bring that to the U.S. side. So maybe some of these days I would love that. I would love to see you do that. Oh, thank you, thank you. I would love that yeah, some days. If, if any many people say that, you know, maybe we could take <clears throat> the mouse house to pony up. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here's $300 million to do a movie. It's like, oh, great. Cool, thank you guys. Happy holidays. Cheers, thank you.